California and Nevada have either passed or have pending legislation that will permit, wait for it, self-driving cars. Yes, it's, it's real, it's not fake, it's not science fiction, it's here today. And who is the company that's driving this awesome tech? It's Google. Yes, not only do they want to be able to index everything, they also want to drive you down the road to get that gallon of milk. Or maybe some more lofty stuff. It's actually pretty cool. With a self-driving car, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can reduce driver distraction. Unless maybe you're playing a game on your Android that's driving your car. But we're not going to go there. You can also improve fuel efficiency by knowing terrain, by knowing speed limits, by knowing road conditions, by knowing the, the condition of your tires, if they're full, if they're not. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can also compress the cars on a given stretch of road so that you don't have to have as much following distance because a computer with a high-speed camera can anticipate distances a lot faster than the human brain and human eyes can. I'm not making this stuff up. Lots of cool reasons why you'd want to do that. I don't have a self-driving car. I'd love to take you out there and show you in my Prius or whatever, I mean my Ferrari, that it can drive itself. But I don't have that. But what do I have? I've got an Android, Galaxy Nexus, and an app that'll make my driving just a little bit safer. And it kind of gets us an insight into what Google's doing with their self-driving cars. Why don't we go take a look? So we fired up the app. The first thing that we've got here is how to mount our phone. We need to make sure that we are mounted 90 degrees this way and 90 degrees this way. And I think I've gotten that as close as I can. Go ahead and say next. Now it's showing us some safety indications and alerts, some information that we've got here. So our headway monitor simply shows us how much distance in seconds we have between us and the vehicle in front of us. And anywhere from red being bad to green being you're just fine. We have collision alerts. Again, just to tell us, hey, this is, you're falling too close. This is dangerous. And then if you're staying on your road or going off the road or out of your lane, Quick settings, we can use this 24 seven. Now what that does is it is essentially runs a service in the background where it looks at your GPS to see how fast you're going and if you're traveling at speed, it'll automatically launch the app so you don't have to, kind of cool. You can direct calls to the speaker in the device. So essentially turn on the phone, the speaker phone. That's nice. Ion Road narrator reads incoming notifications and text messages. You can set that. Speed limit can let you know when you're speeding. I'm in the US, so we measure that in miles per hour. In Utah, we have a couple 80 mile an hour zones. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that right there at 85 miles an hour. If I go faster than that, it will warn me. Now, big disclaimers all over the place. It says this does not replace safe driving habits. It's not responsible for yada, yada, yada. It's not that automated driving system that we were talking about earlier. So now, this is our car interface. You remember way back when we had those car interfaces on our phones? Well, here it is, again, searching for GPS right now. We've got big buttons to go into phone, into navigation, playing music. I don't know why you'd want your photo gallery here while you're driving. I don't think that's a good idea. Of course, we've got our compass. It's got a GPS fix now and it knows that I'm not going anywhere, I'm sitting in the driveway. So let's go ahead and hit this big go live button. So here we go, it's my evening commute and uh, you can see I've got this green stripe in front of me that kind of is shaped like a trapezoid. Now that stripe is just telling me where the lane is. You can see it's kind of trying to guess where the edge of the road is and it goes over and it looks at where the, uh, the amber stripe is down in the middle of the road. That helps me know when I'm drifting in and out of my lane. Of course, if I'm looking at the, uh, the display on my phone to do that, which I'm not. So it has alerts and alarms that will tell me when I'm, uh, when I'm drifting out of my lane. Now what you also saw there was a little pop-up that said uh, something like 1.3 seconds. It's seen the car ahead of me and it knows based on my current GPS based speed how close I am to, uh, to that car in front of me and it's giving me a, a, a notification to let me know how close I am. So there you go, a first-hand look at what 
augmented driving with an Android app looks like really on the road. What it can do to kind of help out and some of its limitations. Now the app name, if you didn't catch that before, is called I on Road, spelled the letter I on Road, all smushed together. There's a light version, which is free, so you can try it and see if you like it. The version that we showed you today was the paid version. It's $4.99 US, at least it was at the time we filmed this video, so you can go ahead and grab that. A couple things you're going to want to know. You will need a car dock. There's just no ifs, ands, or buts about that. If you don't have one, this isn't going to work. Your car dock is going to have to allow your phone to see down the road. That means the away facing camera has to have a clear view of the road in front of you. Some docks have the little suction cup mount in the way. Some docks cover that up because who's taking pictures when you're driving? Honestly. Except us. Okay, you're also going to need a dock that is adjustable so that you can have it plumb and level. The front of the phone has to be perfectly plumb and the top of the phone has to be perfectly level. That's how it gauges its distances and whatnot. If you get those off a little bit, it's not going to work. It's going to mismeasure things and trust me, that's a bigger step than it sounds. Okay. Last but not least, you're going to have to point your phone straight down the road. That sounds simple enough, but by doing that, you're kind of tilting it away from you, the driver, so you might need to reposition the dock just a little bit to make it more visible to you, especially when you've got light and glare coming in. The last item of note, there are some states and some localities that do not let you put stuff on your windshield. I'm not making this up. Suction cups aren't allowed. LCDs aren't allowed. California. So instead you get a kind of a dash dock and you put the phone on the dash which is right in front of the windshield and somehow that's legal but putting it on the windshield isn't. Anybody out there a politician? Come on guys, really? Anyway, so what do you think of this? Cool? Not cool? Would you go out and buy this and get the whole setup and drive with it all the time? Maybe you'd like to do this with, say, a teenager who's just starting to drive so that they can have a little bit more help making sure they don't run into that Mercedes in front of them. I want to know. Now's your chance. Head over to Pocketnow.com. Follow the link right down there if you're watching this on the YouTube video. If you're already on Pocketnow.com, thank you very much. Big thumbs up for you. So everybody hit the big thumbs up button down there, okay? Leave us comments over at Pocketnow.com about if this is something that you're interested in, would you do this? Would you not? Why wouldn't you do this? Would you do this for teenagers who are just learning how to drive if you're a parent? Or maybe you're another teenager who doesn't like your friends driving. I don't know. Let us know over the comments. Cool? I think so. For Pocket Now, I'm Joe Levi. Thanks for watching.